morning. Yes, welcome everyone for this Galactic Conversation episode four on Divine Union today. So very excited to share with you on this subject. And um, yes, it's, a, it's something that has been coming a lot in our conversation. So like between us, but also with our friends, like I don't know about you, but I have a lot of friends and also clients and people just come I also in. have a lot of friends, I swear. Yeah. <laughs> Let me finish, Alex. <laughs> Talking about divine union, and um, it, it wasn't happening like a year ago, even six months ago, not to that extent. So we felt that it could be a, a subject of interest, you know, for audience and for everyone watching here. So of course, if you're going to start watching the live on Facebook, and um, please, you know, you let's look, leave your question in the chat on Facebook, and I will check it, knowing that there is a slight delay. So we might take maybe two or three minutes to read and answer, but please participate. We love uh, sharing. Yeah, for sure. And we're super excited to be here. Uh, welcome everyone who's watching live or watching on the replay. And yeah, as you mentioned, you know, this has become a more and more poignant topic um, in, in our circles where people, as they're raising the level of consciousness and they're doing a lot of expansion work, um, they're starting to think, okay, you know, how does this apply to then relationships? Once you figure out your own relationship to yourself, you naturally want to start applying it to others. You're like, okay, how do I play with other humans? And, you know, this, this is the realm that will probably also is a huge area of growth, right? So like our coach Gabby says, um, your business, having a child and having a relationship are gonna be the three biggest, um, you know, transformative chambers of your, of your consciousness, if you will. And so we wanted to get together and talk about uh, our, our own insights into this process and into what uh, conscious relationships are or fifth dimensional or 25 dimensional relationships, whatever you want to, whatever dimension you wanna play in, and how do we actually ground that in reality and how do we play with that in, in our day to day and what this means. So maybe we can start off with, you know, what is, what is divine union? What does that even mean? Yes, um, I would like to start by sharing that when we experience this notion of divine union, first we might come across personal feelings and emotions around even that term. Like for me, for a long time, um, like most of my life, actually, I didn't believe in it and I wouldn't even call it divine union. I would like the most common language uh, nowadays, it's like twin flame and soulmate relationship, which I don't really personally relate to, but even with this concept, and even when I was getting married and when I was married, I didn't believe in it. I thought it was a ton of bullshit that we are certainly not meant to be with the same person all our lives, that people come and go and so on. So my marriage was kind of doomed from the beginning because I had no trust in it. <laughs> so. I'm going to marry you, but I don't believe in you. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to last anyway. <laughs> so that's all part of the learning process. But I find that when we we experience this kind of resistance within ourselves, it shows that there is room for growth. It's the same with everything. So if we are really resistant to this even concept and notion of divine union, it's interesting to already start the self-inquiry process and taking self-responsibility for how do we feel about that? Because we don't say that you have to believe that it exists. We just say that question, how you feel, especially it's, um, if it's a reaction that really is gonna be kind of disproportionate to the subject uh, being mentioned yes mm -hmm. and you know this is it, it's probably worth to talk about how these relationships that many of us find ourselves in how how they actually get formed right so i know there was a point in my life where i looked around at you know at the woman i was dating at the time and i'm like fuck it's the same pattern every <laughs> single time why I'm like i'm so good at recognizing patterns i'm like how is this still happening and you know once you start actually going down that rabbit hole it can, you can get sucked into it because this is the realm of like traditional therapy and psychology. And they tend to, I have the utmost respect for that modality. However, they tend to focus a lot on story and they focus a lot on let's go through everything that happened and identify and it kind of keeps you in victim mode. Um, so to actually shift out of it, you need to shift the energetics of that relationship. So a lot of these relationships, you know, karmic relationships, uh, ones that are meant to, let's say, push the right pain points uh, on you for you to start paying attention. This is why they're so fucking triggering. Um, it's, it's to get you to pay attention and to shift certain things that you know, you're being guided to. So a lot of times we grow up with our 
role models uh, as, as our parents. And what we see is what we inst instinctively adopt. And we think, okay, this is the role model of a relationship. Unfortunately, a lot of times it's, you know, our parents are acting out their own trauma or they're doing their best. However, it's not necessarily from a super conscious place. And so, you know, when we see dad not exhibiting any feelings or mom being emotionally unavailable, we pick that up as this equals love mm -hmm. because they're our role models. There's no question of, oh, is this the case all the time? Or is this really only, you know, is this only my parents? And as a result, when you're growing up, this actually, you know, you start acting this out in your relationships. Meaning if, you're, if your mom was, you know, not emotionally super affectionate and you associate that feeling of, you know, oh, she might take away her love at any moment, um, you will associate that with love and you're actually going to screen for that on a feeling level in your potential partners. And anyone else, you're going to say, oh, I don't have chemistry with them. Mm -hmm. So what that means is you're on a vibrational level going to be attracting partners who are actually emotionally unavailable and who are going to be constantly withdrawing their love. And you're going to be going through this up and down of, you know, seeking and running after them and also like retreating and thinking, whoa, that's too much because you don't know what a healthy balance is. And this is how this gets formed. And eventually you'll find yourself time and time again in a relationship where, oh my God, this person is amazing. You know, the sex is great and everything is wonderful. And six months later, you're like, fuck, I don't like you. You're, you know, it's like not a good fit. However, at that point, it's already locked into that, oh, I'm afraid of being alone. And so it's, I'd rather stay in what's comfortable than what's familiar. And what is familiar is that pain, right? Mm -hmm. And so you're going to choose to stay in that pain rather than leave the relationship. And this is how people get stuck in these relationships for 5, 10, 20, 30, 50 years. And, you know, I think one of the biggest gifts that I can give to my future children is to actually process all these things so that um, my relationship is actually focused uh, based on love rather than based on these unconditioned, you know, un, uh, unconscious patterns so that I, I don't pass it on to anyone. And what is your experience with that, Tindri? Yes, it's a beautiful share, Alex. There's so much already that came through uh, what you have explained and shared. Um, I find that a lot of patterns, they keep on being repeated as well, because as human beings, we don't learn how to communicate from the heart and to communicate openly. And that's in, in a relationship, in intimate relationship, but it's in all human relationships as well, you know, like business with our siblings, with our parents, even with our own children. It's like we don't really take the time to sit down and reconnect to first our own emotions or our trigger, our own trigger and simply say when you when you say this i feel like that which means like owning or on reaction it's not because for example i'm going to take my um my ex relationship with my ex-husband as an example because that was the one that lasted the longest and i feel i can share the most about but uh, we would never share on anything deep and I never, I didn't know better, you know, I didn't know better. So I just did what I did, which was like being frustrated and very angry. I would have a lot of anger management issues, like really, really destructive. And all I would do was to scream at him, you never listen, but, but, but actually I never took the time to ask him right in the eyes, can you put your phone down, please? Because when you look at your phone and I try to speak with you, I feel that I'm not being heard, which is really owning my feeling. It's got nothing to do with him. He's just being on his phone. He's being himself. And then, you know, when we sit down, it's like when, for example, you say that you don't want me to spend money on yoga teacher training, I feel like I... I can't grow personally, I cannot expand. And so I, I would always uh, project um, without really knowing what exactly what I was projecting. And most of the fights actually like nearly all the fights in, in relationship, it's always of, about who's the biggest victim. It's like, really, mm. you did this to me, you never listen. You make me feel like that, like that. No, like nobody makes you feel like that. You feel like that just by yourself. If the other person is having an attitude that is making you feel this way, just sit down and realize, why am I feeling like this? And all of that, you know, after doing all of this work, it's going to be nearly five years, you know, since we separated. After doing all of this work, I can really say like, um, it was all, all of my responsibility, you know, like all of my responsibility that I was not owning at that time and that ended up in a divorce. It was meant to be, you know, like we friends, everything mm. is beautiful, but it was really like a lot of life goes around this lack of, of communication and this victimhood I was putting myself into unconsciously. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. That's, uh, you know, beautiful view. We're going to start sharing some actual like tips uh, along the way on um, so one is this communication right so especially for men this is super relevant it's the ability to actually 
tune into and feel what, what am I feeling at the moment? Then it's being able to actually say it out loud. And then it's actually being able to say that with a layer of unconditional love, right? So what, what do I feel? How can I share it with this person lovingly and actually ask questions around it rather than through anger? And, you know, just like you mentioned, it's this victim versus, let's say, creator mindset that many people get stuck in. It's like, oh, you make me feel anything. So let's just like settle, settle the line here. Nobody can make you feel shit. Like that's not a thing. You choose every single one of your feelings. You might be doing that subconsciously, but however, that's still you. And no one can impose their feelings on you unless you're just, you know, you're choosing to, you're choosing your own response. And the key here is to start to do that more consciously. And, you know, one is just taking responsibility that whatever I feel is my responsibility. And you also deserve to voice that. You also deserve to share that. You also deserve to be fully seen and fully loved in that expression. It doesn't mean that you're demanding the other person change. However, it is being able to voice what it is that you're actually experiencing. And when you do that with love, you're actually going to be surprised that, you know, the other person suddenly there's no attack coming and they're actually, oh, wow, this person doesn't want anything from me. And it becomes a lot easier to hold space. What does holding space mean? It means you're actually holding this, let's say, virtual field of safety uh, where the other person can be themselves and express themselves without fear of being attacked or you know, being pushed to change or being told that they're not perfect. And th you do this with your presence. And it's your ability to be fully present and just, just be there without necessarily fixing the situation. And many people in our culture, they're afraid of discomfort. If you notice, like you'll share with, you know, it's like, oh, I'm feeling X and Y and Z and it's like some sadness. People tend to do what? They tend to jump and tell you, oh, here's what you do with it. I'm like, oh, no, 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 you, you misunderstood. I don't need your advice. Like, I perfectly know well what to do with it. I, I'm actually, it's important for me for you to listen. And that's it. And so it's just establishing these ground rules up front and saying, hey, at the moment, actually, I need you to listen. It would be helpful for me that you just listen without offering any unsolicited advice. And sometimes it's just establishing those ground rules and knowing what it is that you need and being able to communicate it because you can't expect the other person to read your mind. I mean, you know, we can on some level because we're all telepathic dolphins from Sirius, but also uh, <laughs> that's the reality I live in. And also it's good to use your human words. <laughs> telepathic dolphins. <laughs> I love it, Alex. That's a beautiful share. And I would like to share something that um, happened in one of our interactions and that I feel is that I feel is quite relevant for our conversation. So Alex and I, like we we, we met recently, right? And uh, so now we are co-creating together and we are deepening our friendship. And the other day, like we were speaking on the phone, and Alex was sharing about something like he was sharing and then like I kind of dropped my phone and then I I started interrupting him and so on what happened then is that they were like Alex could have just been pissed off and angry at me because I interrupted him in his flow but what you actually said to me was like Sandrine can we both agree not to interrupt the other person when the other person shares because otherwise we are being cut from this flow and it's really like channeling it's not necessarily channeling you know <laughs> galactic dolphins from other dimension but it's simply channeling our own soul and our inner child and our higher self and and it's this power of listening that you really brought back you brought me back there and i really realized that i had done that so what I could have done as well would have been pissed off by huh, how dare him say this to me, like flick my hair and hang up and just never talk to you again. But you were able to simply share well, from the heart openly that you didn't want to be interrupted. And I, I observed that, huh, he's like, he's completely right. I did that. I own the fact that I interrupted you, but I want to continue having this beautiful friendship, you know, and co-create together. So I will be more careful not to interrupt the flow. And that is really clear communication that we actually put in place between us two, which allow us to really deepen our relationship into deeper, you know, friendship and co-creation. And it's really beautiful uh, being able to call people up from the heart because it was not being judgmental. It was just setting a standard 
for the relationship that we want to have. And we create this standard for, you know, the creation, the, co the connection we have between you, between us both. But this is the standard I create as well with my friends, you know? It's like mm -hmm. being, like saying this, and that's pure communication from the heart. And it's really acknowledging that we each deserve to be able to share because as, as you mentioned um, in that moment, is that you, er, you were in this process of sharing something and you didn't need me to comment or go like, oh, me too, oh, how? it's amazing because it was healing its own process. You were just basically, you were transmuting all your frequencies, you were having all your own light bulbs simply because you were sharing. All that I needed to do that I didn't do was holding space for you. So I really want to thank you for that because I think it's a really good example on how we can create this authentic uh, communication and connection with other humans. Mm. Mm. Thank you for that. And yeah, some, some comments online. Yeah, th that not every partner, not every person has this kind of communication. And, you know, many people are afraid of confrontation or they're afraid of something. And it's worth a conversation because this clarity is is worth it like it's i i would invite you if your partner isn't into you know personal development to at least establish some of these personal boundaries um and to actually have a conversation around it and you know this is what i've noticed that whenever there is something that comes up that is let's say a trigger or something um in my relationship with someone else first of all i'm i'm gonna i choose to take responsibility for that i'm immediately scanning like okay you know, what's what's going on what is triggering me and then actually um, I'll share that with the person. And I realized that this is my, um, you know, beautiful growth area where in the past I would either shut down or be angry or just not, you know, passive aggressively take it out on the person, which many of us tend to do. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, this person, you know, didn't wash the dishes. Well, I'm not going to have sex with them tonight or I'm going to make them work extra hard or I don't know, I don't know, whatever, whatever it is that people, people do in passive aggression. And instead of just communicating it. And so this is what I've actually just, I've, I've just started doing that as my own personal practice. Like I would, you know, let's say invite someone out for a cup of coffee and then their response, just like, I can, I can see the energy flowing. Right. And I can see where it gets stuck. Um, and so actually I've just started saying, Hey, uh, when you reply like this, this is what's actually happening energetically from my perspective. And I would love for you to show up like this. Can you do this? Yes or no. And I'll very quickly give people a chance. Like, can you show up the way that I need you to show up? No. Okay. Thank you. Blessings. Um, <laughs> like I'm, I'm, and, and, and it's just being very clear with what we want. And it's no different than in business with clients, like saying, okay, this is the level of commitment you need to have in order to actually, you know, have a journey together and transformation together. Are you able to show up like this? Yes or no. So giving people the opportunity to speak for themselves and to actually give them a voice already helps them feel heard and already helps them feel seen where you're like, oh, he's not just demanding things, right? Or she's not demanding things. She's saying like, this is what I need. And are you able to give, you know, are you able to show up like this? And then it's the person's own choice. Think of it like inception, right? You're planning the idea in their head, but they think it's theirs. So it's great. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Yeah, it's beautiful and uh, like for people who are already like in long-term relationships and as expressed you know uh, from Rachel thank you for for watching and commenting Rachel uh, about uh, these challenges when the, the, the partner is not on the same level of communication or spiritual growth and development um, I understand it is more challenging because when we are on a spiritual growth path we increase our frequencies and we receive so many new experiences and codes and your relationship basically like we grow we grow we grow and we feel that the other the other partner doesn't grow and so it kind of really kind of create distortion in the in the relationship because we are basically not on the same page any longer and there are, there are a couple of options around that but eventually it's all going back to really our, our, our own, own heart center sorry and feel do i still feel love for that person is the unconditional love still there or is it more habit or comfort or oh we've been together all the time it's always been like that it's like really you know check in regularly oh it's not because we've been together for five ten years or more that we lost still love them. Maybe not because love transform. And for example, when I was with my ex-husband and I realized that it was no longer working, when I check in, I realized, oh, I still love him to a certain extent. You know, he's an amazing human. He's a beautiful father, but that's not enough. That's not enough because it was very clear to me that 
my spiritual growth would never happen if I was to, to be with him. And that, at that, it's at that moment that I realized that the relationship was, was doomed. And so I could choose to stay in it, but jeopardize my spiritual growth, make yep. our life miserable, be horrible in front of our kids, fighting constantly, or really own my feelings and go and have a conversation with him, which is what I did. And the only and first time that we had a heart to heart conversation was breaking up and it was life changing because we both acknowledged that it was no longer mm. working, light bulb, light bulb, light bulb, and we separated the most peaceful, beautiful way ever. But it's really coming to this this ownership do i still really love that person if it's a big yes and if we can visualize and see ourselves you know growing older with that person then comes the second stage of okay so what to do now you know action mode with you know that person mm. Mm -hmm. yeah and you know there's this so yeah so many things coming through for that so for one it's it's constantly asking yourself why are you doing this right why are you in this relationship and if the answer is because I was in it yesterday, well, that's a problem. So you should never do something just because you did it yesterday and, or just because you did it 10 minutes ago. So actually it's in the moment, this, you know, moment by moment decision, conscious decision to say, I choose to be here because this is in my highest alignment and in my highest good. And if it's no longer is, then I'm no longer here. And yeah, guys, this takes courage coding like, well, because like, being able to challenge that and to constantly ask, ask that question. And remember, right, when you're asking a question to your guides or to your, you know, to your heart, hey, is this relationship still my highest alignment? You actually have to be in the frequency of receiving the answer in order to actually receive it. Now, if you're not ready, if you don't wanna actually, it's, you know, when I went to sit with uh, Ayahuasca for the first time, one of the reasons was because I was in a relationship I wasn't super happy in. and. It's, it's so funny because I knew that it shouldn't talk to me about it because I literally asked the question like, hey, tell me what to do in my relationship. Just don't tell me to leave, <laughs> right? And it's like, okay, well, you're not giving me a lot of options here. So let's work on something else. And it's, it's this openness to actually let go of what you think should happen. Because as soon as we're in a relationship, we start projecting like, oh, this is how it should go. And we should have kids here and we should get married here and we should have this kind of life. What, what is should? based on whose standard, said who. And you're like, oh, well, mom and dad, yeah, it doesn't matter what other people did. Just tuning into what is aligned for me. And this, this gets into the reason for why many people enter relationships. So the reason many people enter relationships is because they're afraid of being alone. It's because they feel like, oh, if this super beautiful person is with me, then I'll be beautiful. And then I'll feel beautiful. I'll feel loved. Or, you know, some other concoction of reasons. Now, it doesn't work. Why? Because your inherent reason for doing something is actually then your vibration is saying, I don't have it. And if you're starting any relationship out of this scarcity or fear, eventually, once you have it, it's actually going to turn on itself. And there will be a point where you're just going to shift to a fear of losing it. And inevitably, it's going to continue going in that cycle. And so the only way to actually shift out of this is to recognize you already have everything. Mm -hmm. right so you already have you you are already love inside and so you have both the feminine and the masculine energies in you and that there's nothing like people used to ask me it's like oh why you know why would, would this woman like date you why does she need you i'm like i hope she doesn't need me i hope she's already happy and that i also don't need anything from her however it would be fun to co-create and it would be fun to explore you know doing that together and so the key is it's a choice out of love rather than a choice out of scarcity. So it's a choice out of, I already have everything. I'm already uh, loving. I'm already happy. And then I choose to be with people who are like that as well, rather than seeking people in order to achieve that state. Yes, it's very powerful what you shared. Like, thank you. Um, there's so much I could draw upon with that. And I find that for a lot of people, we, because we are not really happy with who we are, so as you mentioned, like we take someone else it's to, to really feel a void. And I know like there are two different tendencies, like some people, because they are not good within themselves, they will just constantly be with someone else. And that was me. Like, honestly, I started having, I had my first boyfriend when I was 14. And then I was 
I, I never was single. I always had a boyfriend, always had boyfriends or a ton of lovers or whatever until a year and a half ago only. You know, when I separated from my husband, I was just went, I, I went crazy. <laughs> I just collected, collected, collected like that. And I knew that there was something to work on, but I wasn't really ready to face the, the truth. And at a certain moment, I realized I had this idea that there, would, there was something wrong with me if I was going to be single because mm. my mom was, uh, after divorcing from my dad, she basically stayed by herself all her life. She never wanted to be with anyone else and she found all of these sort of excuses. So I was terrified to end up like her. Like literally, I was terrified to end up like sad and, and, and alone, you know? And so I, at this moment, I realized, well, I can choose to be single. I can choose to honor my body as well, not having... I don't need any lovers, you know, like, and what, how would life be if I was really by myself with no lovers for at least a year? And that's what I did. And it was like truly life changing. And I'm very happy to report that I own my singlehood like super well. I really found myself, I alchemized so much of my, you know, my past wounds and traumas working, you know, not only with the shadows, but with the light, with both, you know, healing the inner child and so on, and really alchemizing both feminine and masculine energies inside of me that now I'm at a point that I will not settle for anything less that I feel I deserve, but also that I feel I can give. Because of course there is the other person there and we need to also realize that when we are in a divine union relationship or any relationship, we need to honor the other person as a king or as a queen. And if we don't do that because we are used to it, we mm -hmm. are just bored or in victimhood and constantly blaming the other person, we don't honor or better have. So first, everything comes back with the self. For sure. And it's, it's, it's touching on this dynamic that's super important that I've caught myself in in the past where, you know, we, let's say we're wanting to manifest a relationship. We'll talk about that in a minute. But we're approaching every, every interaction with, oh, what can I get? Which is already the wrong energy because you're like, it creates these cords of attachment, these cords that actually like those of us who work with energy, like we instantly read that and just like, I'm, I'm going around cutting cords all day and I'm like, nope, 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 cut this off. And it creates this energy of like, I want something from this person, like give it to me. And so, you know, I, I choose to shift the conversation of what can I give? what can I give to this person? And I'm actually almost like tuning into their field and I'm almost like merging with their field. And from there, what is this person like? You know, what, what can I, how can I give them joy? How can I share my joy? Rather than saying, oh, they have something that I want that I don't have that I'm going to give. And there's layers of this, right? So it's, it's going to, it's going to evolve. And just, and, and just in general, see how this affects your relationships in general, like I approach my relationships, even if I meet a person for the first time, I ask this super powerful question that usually gets people to completely drop their guard and gets them out of their head. And I, and I ask, what can I do for you? Oh. And you'll be surprised the kind of conversation that that actually shifts you into because suddenly this person's like, oh, they, they don't want anything from me. They want to help me. Oh, wow. And actually it invokes like the principle of reciprocity from social influence and like it gets the person to open up more and it creates a totally different dynamic. So, you know, that's one really important power question. Um, just find yourself in the moment when you're talking to someone or whether it's a potential partner or current partner, see how much of it is, this is what I want to give rather than this is what I want to get. And, and just play with that dynamic. And actually, like, since you, you mentioned it, you know, the, the spiritual journey, I would love to touch a little bit about what happens when people go on a spiritual journey and when they're going through transformative processes, what happens to them if they're already in an existing relationship. I know that, you know, I've seen some of my clients have fears um, around going, doing certain things just because they are in a relationship and they're afraid they're going to, you know, they're going to need to leave it. What have you, what has been your experience? I got a divorce, <laughs> but like uh, I observe around me um, some dear friends of mine who have been in relationship for a long time and when they like 
this particular um, amazing friend that I have, she was sharing that when they first met, like she was not at all in a good place. She was experiencing the worst, you know, shadow self and she met her man and he really was there to pull her out. He could see her light when she couldn't. And I've been on this journey for a long time and now she's going through a lot of spiritual growth, but she can see him for who he truly is. So like he pulled her out of her own shadows and now she, she does that for him. And it's kind of, there is always this catching up because there is no such thing as two souls evolving constantly like to the same way. That'd be boring, right? But there is such a thing as, um, you know, oscillating between frequencies that are close enough that we can pull each other up. And this is what we do in meaningful relationship, not only in divine union, when it's like co-creating with a business partner or co like being with friends, it's like pulling each other up, mirroring each other's lights and for example, when I decided uh, to speak to my ex-husband to say it was no longer working, I realized that he's a beautiful man, you know, like he's amazing in so many ways. It's just that the way I am with him, it's only making him feel small and inadequate. And I'm an angry bitch with him, basically, because he wants to do all of these things. But I don't want to be with someone who does that. And I want to do my thing and everything that I wanted to do, he thought like, what the fuck is this woo-woo work thing? So I was really able, I still had enough love for him and this deep understanding that we needed to have the conversation and separate where we were still honoring each other. We hadn't betrayed each other. We hadn't been horrible too much yet. So what I shared with him is like, that it was no longer working and I don't want it to separate. And yeah. something really touched me, it's like, he suggested that we go to couple therapy, which I thought was really big because like he's not this kind of person. And it already showed like the vulnerability. And then I said to him, when we are together, we just trigger each other's worth. Like, like do you like it? Do you like what's happening? And he looked at me, he's like, I thought that it was what marriage was about being like that. And I looked at him, I was like, but is, isn't this pathetic? Isn't it horrible? Do you actually want to keep on going like that? And then he looked at me, he's like, no. And then it's mutual. It's mutual. It's fucking mutual. I agree. I don't want this anymore. And so like this, this level of pure, you know, owning our own feelings, but also honoring the other soul that we are in a relationship with or that we we may be long to be in a relationship with and honoring their own sovereignty, their own right to be fully happy, but also to work on our own wounds and to acknowledge that maybe I, I'm not the one that he's going to be the most happy with, you know, and now mm -hmm. he's with a new partner to have a baby and uh, like, like they seem really happy. They are happy. And it's realizing that uh, wanting to be together at all costs might be more, da more damaging for both souls and, especially sold missions, you know, mission sold, you know, like then actually having the conversation, not necessarily separating, but saying like, this is not longer working. How can we together work on shifting relationship? Because that's the thing. I still have a relationship with my ex-husband. The structure has changed. We're not married. We're not lovers. We are not even like close friends. We parent together. And that's the frame that is working for both of us. And it's mm -hmm. realizing that it's not because as well we are like two single um, people on the same frequency with the same interest that we're meant to be together. We, there are many different kind of relationships we can have with, and that's both valid for people who like somebody from the other sex or the same sex, by the way, this conversation, you know, it doesn't, it transcend, trend, trend, trends. Trend, <laughs> <laughs> Holding the microphone to you, Alex. <laughs> on words, that the sign. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, it's it's you know it's it's interesting that in the beginning of the journey, um, I've seen I've basically seen one of a few things happen, where one person goes off on you know starts having transformational experiences, and I usually nine times out of ten that relationship ends very quickly afterwards. Um, if the other person doesn't isn't on the same path. Um, because you start, and you know, th this happened to me as well, where I started just vibrationally and energetically seeing the drastic difference and that, you know, the different paths that my partner and I were on. And I realized that it was a disservice to myself and to her for us to actually stay together. And it's being able to be honest with yourself to actually admit that, that many of us, you know, have sometimes struggled with in the past. And so recognize that 
once you go on a, you know, on a journey, it doesn't mean that your partner is necessarily mirroring that step for step. However, it's also not your job to rescue them and to turn off the rescuer syndrome. When, you know, when I meet someone these days and I can see that they're just not on a vibrational, uh, you know, on, on, on the level that I need in the past, I'd be like, oh, you know, I, I, I know all this quantum shit. Like I'm, you know, intergalactic shaman and I can help you. And like, let's, let, let's do, I'm like, cool. Thanks. Good talk. And I'm just not turning that rescuer mode on. And it's important to recognize it's not your responsibility for anyone else's growth. It's your responsibility for your own growth and that you also deserve happiness and that there are people out there who are actually at your, you know, at your vibration, at your level, who will already honor you right now and where it can be co-creation rather than you, you know, dragging someone out of the shadows or anything. So it's, you know, recognizing that it doesn't quite have to be like that. And yes, as you gain more and more abilities, more awareness, yeah, the field of people does get a bit smaller and that's okay because, you know, you're not actually going for, you know, for quantity. And it's, it's really a beautiful, like, and I've seen this mirrored with, you know, my relationships with women in general, where every time a woman enters my life, I'm recognizing, or anyone for that matter, I'm recognizing it's actually reflecting a part of me that I get to, you know, I have an opportunity to work through. And so like when I meet a woman, I recognize, wow, we triggered the shit out of each other right now. In the past, I'd be like, okay, you know, this don't like, go away. Now, like, hey, so we both have this opportunity right now to actually work through some karmic elements. And, you know, I'd rather go into it and clear it. And are you open to that? And so whether that relationship lasts a month, you know, a day, a week, a year, I, I'm not putting any boundaries on that. However, I know that there is a reason that that person is in my life. And so with one person, it might be working through the ability to actually, you know, whatever, if jealousy shows up to be able to vocalize that with someone else, it might be coding more unconditional love with someone else. It might be like, sexuality, which we can also touch upon right now. And, you know, just recognize it doesn't have to be like this, oh, I have to manifest this perfect partner. and I'm going to work through all these things. Recognize it can come in bits and pieces and that every relationship is actually your relationship with the divine. And so your relationship with earth is a relationship. Your relationship with the universe is a energetic relationship. Your relationship within yourself, of both the masculine and the feminine parts is a relationship question is can you treat it as such and can you walk into it with the intention of actually alchemizing that and recognizing oh i'm looking at you know this beautiful garden can i approach it with what can i give to you oh and let me let me receive the you know let me receive your beauty but i'm not coming here and say oh i want to smell you and you know walk walk away so just you can abstract away from like individual relationships and I do this because, you know, I'm, I'm a growth junkie and I like al al alchemizing everything all the time, everywhere. So these are just some of the helpful things that I found. I love it. I'm just going <laughs> to smell you and walk away. Imagine how Isn't that, isn't that like the human equivalent? Like of your like, hair goes I'm, I'm, I'm just going to walk away because you don't have the legs and the frequency. Yeah, <laughs> yeah your stem is not long enough. I'm out. So as we enter that, we could maybe talk about um, a little bit more about manifestation around divine union, which we are working on both, Alex, right? <laughs> we are talking a lot about that. And, you know, like how, how when we really have this kind of alchemization within ourselves and we really know more what our soul is, what we came here to do, then we can start tapping more and more into 5D, 7D and beyond frequencies, which allow us to manifest with greater ease, you know, the lifestyle we want, the clients we want, the business we want, and also the divine union we want. And um, so it's important to realize that there is a stand, stand, certain standard that we can have. And that is not being a mean or judgmental, you know, to the other gender. It's simply saying, mm -hmm. okay, it's a meeting of frequency. And I would like people to really uh, tune into that and about the fact that we need to meet on a frequency level that is very similar to ours. Because as you have mentioned, if we are into the rescuer mode, which it would be totally me, I would totally constantly want to save people. It's like, I have to lower my frequency so much to save the poor other person to show them how amazing they are, then actually I'm depleting my energy, I'm being taken out of my vortex and it's not serving anyone. And who am I to come as the savior of this person who's actually perfect, like he is already, it's just that our frequencies are not matching. So it's really important to realize that 
when we set the intention to manifest divine union, first we really have to tune into the frequency of that person, which is going to match ours. And then also to, yes, 3D things that we would like ideally for this person to be and to have. And for example, for me, I know that it's somebody who doesn't want any more children or who's happy not to have any kids because I had to work a lot around that. And I realized that I would often drop and compromise myself and my soul mission too much because I wanted so badly to be with someone who said, oh, maybe I have another child. But then I would start crying and freaking out. And I cannot picture myself with my most ascended timeline having another child. And it's very difficult because for me, it's like it's I feel this narrowing of this window as you say there is less quantity you know but it is trusting it is trusting that the other person i'm going to meet is somebody who already has children or who doesn't want children and like mm -hmm. it's like retuning really into what we feel the most aligned to us and also have a little bit of room for improvisation maybe that person won't have you know that height or that nationality or that accent that i like and that is the things that i feel i can compromise with what do you think mm -hmm. about that alex how do you feel like yeah, beautiful. I so I wouldn't view it as compromise because to me it means you're giving up uh, something. It's let's say it's points of flexibility. Yes. And I would, you know, I think it is important to define kind of what are the things that um, you must have. And so for me, that's kind of always been easy. Where I'm like, no, I want intelligence and spirituality, and you know, and all all the things. I'm like, I'm not settling on you know on any of that because I deserve to have all of it and. For me that's possible and and you're right also just defining the points of flexibility of where you feel like you can you know maybe and recognizing what is actually your true desire and what of that is imposed by society right so for instance someone might say oh i need this person to be you know that you know this this good looking and wear these kinds of clothes and be really sexy etc however when in reality they want somebody with a good sense of humor and when they picture them themselves with the person, what really fills them up is like this, you know, the sense of humor and that they realize that the looks don't matter as much. Or maybe, you know, the looks do matter. However, you don't really care whether they, you know, cook. And it's recognizing what of those things that you feel like you want in a partner, how many of those are yours, truly? And that's being honest with yourself. And how many of those are imposed by your friends or by your parents or by society? And recognizing you actually don't need to do that. Um, and we had we had an interesting question online that, you know, if um, someone wants to work through uh, their karma, but if the person they meet doesn't, um, will, it be, uh, will they be in the same pattern? Like uh, I can offer my perspective is don't date that person, uh, pretty simple. Um, because if the person is not ready to do work and view relationship as a point of growth, that's probably not the person you wanna be with anyway. Um, and it's going to be very hard when only one person is working on it. And you can work through your karma, a lot of it, like ind individually, right? The whole point is to reach a level of self-love where those karmic patterns are no longer coming up. They're coming up because they're getting you to pay attention to where you don't love yourself. And you can learn to love yourself. And I would say for many people, you should learn to love yourself on your own. Because if you, do, if you can't love yourself on your own, there's no way you can share that with anyone. And so if, if I'm meeting someone, I'm wondering, can I give this person unconditional love? And if the answer is no, then this, I, I'm doing the service to this person by dating them because I can't give them what it is that I want. And so then it's on me and my responsibility. What's your opinion on that? I love that, Alex. It's, um, I love how straightforward you are with that because you don't tiptoe around like I find is really so important in relationship is that simply don't be with a person who's not on the same level than you and it's nothing about judging it's about honoring your own frequency honoring your path honoring your soul calling your soul mission we cannot spend our energy and our time trying to communicate with someone who simply doesn't want to communicate they might be better off as well with somebody else you know who doesn't want to communicate either it's like we are to ourselves we are to our souls to have standard and not lesser of vibration that is our frequency have healthy boundaries if people we get into like you like me girls like if you like me and do all of these things because you have zero boundaries so work on your boundaries it's like not don't allow yourself to have all of these energetic leaks it's like it's very 
interesting and easy to observe where energetic leaks are. As soon as your mind is constantly on, I need to do this, how can he do that to me, blah, 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 is that an energetic leak? See where it comes from, if it's karmic, and, and find ways to close it. Walk away from people who are not ready to have authentic relationship with, with you, like, and on all levels, you know, like not only in love, and it's really setting the bar, and it's actually, we need to train our human to be there for our soul. We need to alchemize, you know, to really bring oneness inside of ourselves. Like so many people, we want to have a happy life, but yet we allow our human, our ego to constantly like run around like that into victim mode. Let's save everybody. Let's be in one relationship. That's never going to happen. It's just like constant um, leaking of energy. We are procrastinating. I realized big thing, Alex. During all of these times when I was just dating the wrong guys and just, you know, even having all of these lovers, actually what was happening, I was procrastinating my mission, you know, because mm. all of that time, all of that energy, all of these thoughts, why did he text me back? When is he going to see me? I really want sex badly. Why is he not coming? And so it's like all of that, when I chose to be single, where did my energy go? To me, to my soul, and no, look at me, <laughs> at what I'm doing, you know, my life, my life is amazing because I stopped leaking my energy into things that were simply not aligned with me. And so now in my life, I only allow people to come in my life that are on the same frequency that I can give to and that I can, can give me back. It's this beautiful like, kind of infinity loop of giving and receiving constantly. And we don't even have to think about it because we feel it in our heart and we know that these mm -hmm. people are gonna be there for us. Yeah, for sure. And it's, it's this, um, you know, we can all sense when we're receiving and it's actually getting to a point where we, where we recognize, hey, we deserve to receive. Right. So many of us are used to being uh, people pleasers and giving, 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 but we actually don't know how to receive. And well, it's, it also feels a lot more vulnerable to receive because you're not controlling it. And so there's elements of control. And, you know, I want to touch upon this, this subject of, of uh, sacred sexuality and what that actually means. So, you know, even not going deep into Tantra and Taoist practices, um, which are a beautiful uh, field in, in and of themselves, you know, even many of us relate to others on a sacral chakra level, meaning based on sexual attraction, right? So you'll walk around um, and like, I've gotten to a point where, okay, in, in the past where I would notice myself, oh, wow, like I'm just being um, taken by that energy. I'm like, wow, okay, I'm sexually attracted to a person. And immediately I'm like, okay, what am I making this mean? Where is this coming from? And if it's coming from a sense of lack, okay, cool. I'll cut that cord. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna realign. And now at this point, I can literally sense which chakra a person is relating to me from. And so for instance, if I, if I see that, you know, a woman is using her sexuality to manipulate men, which many, you know, women are like, they're taught to, this is how you survive. This is how you get ahead in the world. This is how you get a man to like you. Um, so it's not actually a balanced approach. So I'm instantly kind of like sidestepping that and backing out and zooming out and viewing this person at a holistic level. And then instantly, you know, I can, see that it's you know a little girl like seeking for help and crying for help and that's you know that's her journey and that's beautiful but I can instantly see that and have that perspective so it's not judgment I view it as discernment where I can view at a person I can view a person holistically and see kind of where they're at and and send them love no matter what so it's this ability to recognize are you sexualizing you know men or women and if so where is that coming from in you what part of you feels like it's missing something or yearning for something that's your responsibility to heal. And when you heal that, you're gonna start noticing that very easily if other people are doing that and you'll no longer be vibrationally attracted to that. And so you'll be able to kind of shift away and view the person holistically to be able to relate to them on a more interesting level. And there's a big difference between a woman who is, um, you know, or, or a man like who is using their sexuality uh, just on a subconscious level to manipulate and to like, to relate on that level to a woman who fully embodies her sexuality and where she knows her, like it's instantly this aura of regality and royalty, this, this aura of divinity, this aura of, I know my worth. I also know I'm a sexual being and I know how to use this energy. However, it's very much balanced throughout the chakras and it's, that is very attractive. Oh, thank you for sharing that, Alex. It's beautiful because, um, 
as women, especially nowadays, you know, in the spiritual world, and I, I read a post like that by the beautiful Livia on social media yesterday, and she was talking about, you know, like women being really in their powers, like really being the queen archetype. And, and when we are you now fully embodied into both our feminine and masculine, there is no need for us to manipulate the men to try to get them, to call them, to chase them, basically. It's like simply residing in our feminine power of attraction without manipulation, simply you know, being fully anchored. And then allow the men, allow the king to actually come and you know, come and find us because um, there is a lot of distortion I find in today's society around the fact that men and women are equal. And of course, we are completely equal in rights. But there is something about frequency that we need to really talk about is that when we are completely anchored and aligned in our divine feminine, fully aligned also with our divine masculine, the woman doesn't have to chase the man. Because if the man is interested in the woman, he will text. He will text. He will answer back the phone. He will say, when can I see you? I want to see you. You know, if there is not that coming, it's that simply that he is not there. And so for women to chase like, to chase like that, um, it's actually creating energetic leaks. And I know that some women might not like to hear this because they would say, oh, but what about equality? If I really like someone, I can, I can show. Yes, we can show our interest. Of course, we can show our interest and open this door, but it's not like constantly chasing and wondering why and how we can get them in our net, basically, which becomes manipulation. It's simply like residing in our power, fulfilling our mission, you know, being happy and vibrant like the queen, and then a lot of king to come. So what, what would you think about that? And how do you feel about this kind of archetypal uh, frequencies in divine union? Yeah, beautiful. I've had to clear distortions around that myself. So, you know, growing up in, in um, like Eastern European culture, I'm originally from Moscow, and there is this archetype of a woman, like a woman is used to men completely taking care of her to, to paying for her. And there is this like consumerism energy that I, you know, I'd never really enjoyed. And, you know, I had this kind of and, and then growing up in the States afterwards, I, it was the complete opposite where, yes, there is this like very strict equality. Every person pays for only themselves. It's like, and that gave me the opposite end of the spectrum. And so I've had distortions to clear around that where, look, so men have like, let's say four, uh, and this is from my teacher Sundari here in, in Bali, right? So there is, men have four chakras that are actually emitting, they're projecting, right? So it's your and it's every other one. So it's your root chakra, it's your solar plexus, it's your throat and your crown. And women have three that are emitting. It's the, the womb, the, the sacral, the heart, and, and uh, the third eye. And that's why women are more intuitive, more loving generally, at least to start out with. And so there's this flow of energy that actually happens between those. And you know, a woman kind of makes on a quantum level this creates the space for a man to come into her life. And yes, then it's on the man to actually then um, on, a, on a root level to provide this level of basis of the security, uh, this field of safety from which the woman can then through her womb can then project this, you know, sacral energy that can help the man actualize and self-realize even more um, in this joint co-creation. And so it's, you know, it, it's, it's this element of, I want to do things because it's my choice and because I'm being supported to do that rather than because it's an expectation. And so it's this archetype of, you know, releasing all expectations of what you think a man should do or a woman should do, because those expectations are going to kill you. Those expectations are going to create so many projections and no one likes to feel like they have to do something. I, I have no desire to pay for a woman and even at a restaurant if she expects me to do it because I, I instantly read that and I'm like, this is not interesting for me because I don't feel like I have a sense of freedom in my choice. Right. And so similarly it's, it's vice versa. So both, both sexes actually get to release all expectations and actually come from a place of presenting the other person with total freedom of choice and communicating, Hey, and, and it's also like showing gratitude. Right. I can't tell you how many times, like, I would do something in person just takes it for, for granted and like, okay, I'm noticing that because it shows me that you expect this to happen. And that means you don't recognize it, that I'm doing this because I choose to not, be, not at all because I have to. And like these things very early on in a relationship very, will very quickly tell you how a person shows up in general. And so, you know, when I'm, 
don't want to say like I'm filtering, but I am filtering. And it's, I'm, you know, ask people open-ended questions and give people an opportunity to show up and how they show up in the early stages is going to be pretty close to how they show up um, later on. So allow people to show you who they are. Yeah, oh, it's beautiful. I love it, Alex. Oh, you're, so, you're so good at explaining things clearly. We have a question here. Do you want me to read it to you? Mm -hmm. yep. So jo Josephine is asking um, a question. So how would you interpret a connection with the color white or the silver color? So Josephine is really highly psychic and can see and perceive a lot. She's also working a lot with the white lions, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. And um, so how can we tune into that? Like, um, so when you visualize the color, Joseph, when you, when you are in this relationship, Josephine, I, I just understand that there is a lot of white and silver color around that, right? Hmm. So, so I that, yeah. Wait. Do you want me to answer that or go ahead? So I feel that uh, Josephine, um, so that's a very good example as well, that when we are in a situation, it doesn't matter how psychic and intuitive we can be, there is only so much we know and we can see. So it's very good to reach out to mentors, coach, psychic, or friends who can help us, you know, anchor back into our truth. And yes, maybe tune in and give us some insights. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'll, and I'll add to that. So once you get to a certain level of like, let's say intuitive abilities, like I'll read a person's feel in the first five seconds of meeting them and I'll know all their traumas and everything. So there's no point hiding them. So like, okay, <laughs> I don't, I, I'm like, yeah, I, I, can see every, I can see, every, I can see everything. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't always tell, tell whether that's because they're like, fuck, I feel naked. I'm like, well, you basically are. And uh, so there's no, hide in front of Alex. <laughs> like, there's no point hiding. Like I see through it instantly. And like and 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 that and that and that's okay maybe that's a little bit part of part part of the game right so for it to be a little fun however recognize that it's not the symbol itself that matters it's what it actually means to you and so when you're seeing you know like i'll i'll read a person's field and i'll receive certain information and it might be you know a pirate ship with unicorns and white lines on it and it might mean something to me but that same image and visual will mean something else to someone else so it's actually, you can tune in, what is the color white? What does the color silver actually mean to you? Are you associating them with some, something positive or something negative? And that's also a beautiful conversation to have with the person because I'll actually say like, like I've had examples where I would meet a woman and she'll tell me her name. And I, I for, for the life of me, I can't remember it because a different name is coming through. I'd be like, hey, I, I just want to call you by this name. And she's like, I haven't used that name since I was three years old. I'm like, it, I don't know. <laughs> and so it's being able to communicate the stuff uh, to to the person that you're with and say, hey, this is what I'm receiving and this is what I'm interpreting it as. How does this resonate? Use it as an opportunity to open a conversation. It's not just an opportunity to let me read this information from you and use it for my own good. No, I'm receiving this so that we can co-create better together and I'm involving the other person in it and I'm holding space for them to feel like receiving this kind of information is normal as shit. Let's talk about dolphins and white lions. Let's go there. I love it. And I love how you say that uh, when you meet somebody, basically you can feel everything and see everything. And like it's really, it shows as well that really we have to find people that match our frequency and also like omission. Because if we are going to be with somebody who is that psychic and that intuitive, and we are really not in a place where we are also that intuitive and that psychic, but also that that authentic about being seen fully, then that's not a relationship for us. Because when we are with people who are like super woke, I know that sometimes, you know, I see people that are super Hashtag woke super and I'm woke. like, oh, you know, they like, what are they gonna see about me? And I'm like, actually, like they can see everything they want. I've got, there's nothing, there's nothing for, for me to hide. I'm a pure channel, I'm a crystal clear, you know, soul and, and that's it. And, and it's this, this ability that we must find in ourselves to be fully vulnerable and to really own also our inner child and our, you know, all the feminine darker side because yes, for example, if I have an interaction with you, I know that we are both that psychic and I know that we're going to pick up on what the other person, I know that we're going to pick up on the other person. <laughs> Stop it, Alex, you interrupted me for goodness sake. <laughs> Stop interrupting me. <laughs> I've lost my track of thought now. So it's like, yes, being able to, 
to, to be seen fully because if we are not ready to really open the door to our heart and to love unconditionally but also be loved unconditionally and and saying like i'm struggling with this you know like i need help with that you know like um can you be there for me or like i don't even know what's happening with me i just need a good hug and i just need a good chat and don't fix me and it's like this this level of vulnerability and if we cannot do that for our own selves if we cannot you know go and do the work on our own selves there is no way we're going to be able to be with a person who can who gonna you know be there for us on that level mm. Mm -hmm. because why would a person be there for you if you can't be there for yourself mm. so many times you know this this I, I i like questions because they're really foundational technology of reality architecture um and you know ask yourself what you know you have your beloved in front of you you have your family you most of the time you would do anything for them and now ask yourself honestly would you do that same thing for yourself and if the answer is no there's your work because so many times we'll do so many things for others but we're actually feel like we don't deserve for that ourselves and until you rebalance that you can't expect anyone to show up for you in the way that you want because you're not doing that for yourself so be honest and you know it's when you're with people who are uh, very intuitive and who are very tuned in, you're right. You get to completely drop your guard and own your shit because somebody will instantly pick up on your trauma. They'll say, hey, this is what I'm feeling. And, you're, and you get to go, yeah, you're right. This is, and in that moment, when you're showing up in a way that, you know, you don't feel like it's consistent with who you are and you feel like you're angry, whatever it is, in that moment, you can voice that and say, hey, I, I know I'm not showing up how I want to. I know I'm not in my higher self. I don't really know what to do. Can, can you hug me right now? Mm -hmm. Break, like break it. Because recognize in the past, your neural pathway would be one thing. And you know, that doesn't fucking work. Mm -hmm. So in order for you to get a new result, you need to do a different thing. You need to think a different way. You need to act a different way. And you can in the moment decide that. And that's one of the hardest things to do. Because when you're in that trigger, this is the question that I ask myself very often. I'll, I'll ask, what would love do? right now what would love do and but the answer will always be love it will be something around that it will be communicating that very vulnerably just dropping your guard and dropping all your attacks and instantly going from being angry to being completely vulnerable and open and training that muscle will save you years of pain and it will take you into entirely different timelines and this is um one of my favorite things, you know, one, one of my favorite questions to ask, and maybe you can comment on that and then, and then we can go into our activations. And in the meantime, if you guys have any questions, just start typing them in the chat box so we can um, get to them before we go galactic. What was the question, Alex? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted with the chat. There's no question at the moment. <laughs> yeah, people, if people have questions, please uh, feel free to type. Um, but you know, I would, I would love to hear your comments on how, when, when you are triggered, um, when you have that situation, how are you shifting that? You know, how are you handling that? What is your transportation technology? As soon as there is a trigger, I'm like, Ooh, exciting room for growth. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really, uh, um, there is a very strong template running through humanity around hardships and, and thinking that being human is hard, we have to work hard, and also a template around uh, divine union that's supposed to be hard. Like so many people say that, oh, when you meet your twin flame, it's gonna be bloody hard and super challenging and triggering. I've never related to that, fuck that. I'm not gonna go into divine union to have my life you know, broken into pieces, no fucking way. It is not hard. Let's review our vocabulary. I love that. I know that you love that, but it's like, ooh, this challenge is arising. Like there is, it's like this movement of retraction, this density is arising. Let's shift that immediately. Exciting, room for growth. What is it triggering inside of me? Always bring it back to me, 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 me in a beautiful, selfish way for self growth. And then communicate, connect from the heart. and when we are in a relationship any kind of relationship it's always meant to be let's de-hook ourselves from the idea that we have to be and we have to stay in relationship 
you know, we, in friendship, even with our parents and our siblings. And I know that a lot of people are going to be triggered by that, but standing in our no, sovereignty means owning every single relationship to the highest standard. And if a relationship is destructive to our own well-being, our own spiritual growth, our own evolution, then we owe it to ourselves to unhook ourselves from that and walk away free. And I think that a lot of people, they struggle and they go and see psychic and healers because they want to be said, you must stay in the relationship, it's all his fault, blah, 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 blah. 90% of the time when people come with this, the advice actually, let go, surrender, you know, surrender. Just let go of the relationship, let go of the expectation. And that is very scary for people because people think there is something wrong with being single. There is nothing wrong with being single. Single is amazing, for goodness sake. <laughs> so it's rewiring the mind into being excited about a challenge, about any kind of challenge. Woo! Yeah, view everything as an opportunity. Mm. Um, you don't have to, you know, I would invite you to reframe anytime you say, I need to, or I must, or I should, to I get to. Yes. It's a powerful technology shift um, that will allow you to view everything as an opportunity. And you're right. Like one of the best gifts somebody can give me now is to trigger me because I know that there's so few of them left that I'm like, oh, this is awesome. I know this is trapped energetic potential that I get to reframe. I usually don't tell that person in the moment that, uh, but that's what I'm feeling. Um, I'm like, sweet. I get to, I, I get to shift things. And now so, I want to trigger you and poke you, Alex. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> not right now <laughs> um cool so uh let's let's go into uh, a couple activations um as usual at the end we like to do some quantum surgery on uh, on everyone even though our teams have already been working on all of you everybody who's watching live and watching the replay this entire time um it's the beauty of working with quantum people and uh, so if anybody has any questions, just type them in the chat box and we'll get to them after the activations. So at this moment, let's uh, set, it, set up straight. Make sure that nothing is crossed. Your feet are firmly on the ground. And gently closing your eyes. And taking a deep breath into your heart. Visualizing beautiful red and gold cord coming out of your base, going deep through the earth, through the mineral realm, animal realm, Atlantis, Lemurian realm, deep into the center of the earth, wrapping around the core of the earth. And feeling yourself supported by Gaia, feeling that connection, that cord connecting you deep to the wisdom of the earth and all the ancient realms. Now visualizing a beautiful gold and silver cord coming out of the top of your head, going up into the quantum field, through time and space, anchoring into the heart of your soul star. And taking a deep breath. Activating your individual column of ascension, anchoring you in between Gaia and your soul star, connecting you to your soul power, soul abilities, soul mission. And now we're going deep into your heart chamber and feel how your heart pumps blood throughout your body with every second, sending nutrients throughout it. And now visualizing that heart, this beautiful galactic portal leading into directly into source where it's non-physical manifestation is in the 12th dimension and beyond and with every pulsation with every in breath it draws in infinite abundance infinite love infinite joy in the 12th dimension and with every exhale it transmutes all that as blood, as nutrients, and sends it to every cell of your body. Feeling your body rearrange itself on a cellular level to make room to receive this love, to receive this abundance, to receive this joy.
You feel how your cells start to have a little more space around them. They start vibrating at a higher frequency. Now I request that our guides please dissolve all cords for every person watching live and on the recording that are no longer serving their highest sovereign good across all timelines, all dimensions, all realities. Thank you. And repeating soundly to yourself as you visualize past relationships, whether with family or partners, repeating to yourself, I call back all parts of my soul. I call back all parts of my soul. I call back all parts of my soul. Visualizing streams of energy across time and space flooding into your field, little droplets of gold entering your body, bringing you back to more soul memory, more completion, more wholeness, more love. And now repeating, I give back all that is not mine. I give back all that is not mine. I give back all that is not mine. Visualizing silver cords of energy disappearing off into the distance, taking away everything from your field that is not yours, giving it back to those people with love, with kindness, with generosity, with forgiveness, and recognizing that there's nothing to forgive that the experiences that they brought into your lives have all been for your highest good, that your soul chose those lessons to bring you to the level of awareness, the level of love that you have now. Now, taking another deep breath into your heart. And embodying your new field, more soul memory. Now using this opportunity to open a portal that you're going to step through where you're in your divine relationship, either the person you're with now or someone else. So on the count of three, we're stepping through this portal. One, two, three. And now feeling what it feels like to be around your beloved. What it feels like to have that deep level of self-trust. the level of courage and calling in the white lines from Sirius to assist, to share your courage codes, to come into alignment quickly and gracefully. Coding every person on this call and on the recording with the ability to step into alignment and take action to execute guidance. Thank you. And feeling what it's like to voice your truth, to tap into your heart, to be received. What does it feel like to have your partner fully receive you with love, with support? And how does it feel like to give that, knowing that it's magnified and amplified. Allowing yourself to tune into that vibration on a sensory level. Lock it in, lock it in, lock it in. Collapsing all timelines that are not consistent with this divine union template. I request a copy and paste of my divine union codes into the field of every participant on this call and on the recording. I request that these codes be put in an automatic upgrade cycle so that every participant receives new layers when they're ready. Thank you. And now on the count of three, going back into your physical body. One, two, three and anchoring 
into your present reality, maintaining that frequency of gratitude, of unconditional love, of presence, and of divine union with yourself. And so it is. From here, Sandrine, I'll let you take us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alex, for you have shared everything that we needed to share on a quantum technical level. Thank you very much for going so deep into the rewiring of letting go of what no longer serves the human and also anchoring into future linearity, into this time and space reality to call in divine union. We really honor your channeling abilities and we are very, very grateful to be able to co-create this with you. As you know, as you have mentioned all of this now, it allows us to continue to work in the quantum on anchoring all of these beautiful beautiful plugins and all of these clearing and healing that you have initiating through your beautiful transmission. So please, all humans watching this now and on the replay, now that we are still working in your field and for up to three or four days, depending on who you are right now and where you are at in terms of divine union with the self and divine union with another beloved human. So we'll keep on working in your field. Mm -hmm. So we would like to share some wisdom with you on this. And some of you might like to bring into their awareness a key code that we find is very relevant for humanity. For many of you know what it is. And it is the yin and the yang, the perfect merging of frequencies of divine feminine and divine masculine coming together in a circle representing oneness. So please bring this key code, the yin and the yang within your heart portal now, simply merging this divine union code, this perfect alchemization of frequencies within you, this is going to tremendously help you alchemize this frequency within the self and also in your divine union. We just, as this process keeps on going during a couple more minutes and for the next couple of days, as this process is undergoing now, we would simply like to share this with you. Please know that because humanity is ascending at the moment, it is important for you to set the intention to anchor your divine union into 5D frequencies and above, knowing that 5D frequencies are based on unconditional love and gratitude and also ease. As mentioned during the conversation, divine union template is based on ease. Because imagine, imagine only 5D frequency, we do not know what it is, conflict and manipulation. Mm? We simply meet the other beings that we meet from a hard place with unconditional love. And we will co-create for as long as we need to co-create. And when we feel that we have reached the tip of the co-creation, we have manifested all co-creation together. And it is time to go and co-create with other beings. We simply surrender and let go, honoring the choice that we each honor by co-creating together and then the choice of starting to co-create with other people. So realize that you have to set your intention of anchoring your divine union into 5D frequency and above. Therefore, you will transcend all this distortion residing still within humanity around romantic relationship or twin flame and soulmate. It is supposed to be challenging and triggering and manipulating also around sexuality that is very anchored into the shadows. We would like also to mention that the divine feminine is not anchored into shadow work. Divine feminine is not anchored into working in the case with shadow and sexuality and manipulation. No, crystalline timeline activations means that both men and women have access a certain level of consciousness that allow them to experience love making physicality anchored in crystalline timeline 5D reality, meaning that the merging of the two physical bodies is going to create an alchemization of frequencies taking these two beings yet to new level of frequencies through the meeting of all this perfect union based on the alchemization of each individual of these feminine and masculine frequencies then 
coming together. It is very much the, in anchoring the trinity, the man, the woman, anchoring the relationship, relationship being the third pillar. It is very important to realize that when a, a man and a woman, oh, depending on your sexual orientation, human, okay, it is broadly. When two souls come together to walk in divine union together, it means that they create also a frequency which is called the relationship. This frequency, the relationship, has to be honored and loved and nurtured and cultivated and always anchored into 5D frequency based of unconditional love, ease, open communication, equal giving of receiving, giving and receiving, and also mirroring each other's light. The relationship has to be cultivated. So if you find that you are in a relationship where it's mostly boring, mm, out of habit, always same thing happening, take the relationship, visualize the relationship as a frequency being, because it is, and talk to it, relationship. What can I do for you? How can I show up for you? What do I need to be doing on myself? What shift do I need to bring? How can I honor you really? relationship. Do you still want to be present here relationship? Or have you had enough? Do you feel narrowed, constricted, enslaved because I'm stuck with this person? I feel stuck with this person. We would like to bring that to your awareness because not many humans realize that it is like giving birth to a child. When you come with a partner, you give birth to a frequency called a relationship. And this relationship will be coded in different ways depending on the soul contract coming. The soul contract between the two souls. A relationship between two souls could be about simply bringing wealth, maybe also maybe having children. A relationship could be coded to simply birth children, which was the case for Sandrine's ex-husband. Relationship was coded to bring birth to these beautiful children, but the relationship could be coded for co-creating a mission together, maybe buying some land, maybe doing some charity work, maybe bringing community together, friends together. Hmm? So get to know the relationship. How is it coded? How can you both nurture the relationship as much as you nurture each other hmm? and your very own self? And as we say, so it is, it is by this transmission, we also enhance your brain. So with brain enhancement, you can understand better the real, real codes behind the Van Union template. And we would like to finish with this. Realize that when two mission souls come together from equal or similar frequencies, and they meet up at a certain point. It's literally like, um, we would say like an atomic explosion in the quantum, right? Because the merging of these two souls is so powerful that it literally creates a new reality. Hmm? This is what it is so very special because a new reality created, it's gonna be anchored in 5D reality, therefore helping the whole of humanity shift to a new level of evolution. This is why it's coming very strongly at the moment. This is why Sandrin and Alex were called to do this because many souls are going to meet up in divine union now to help create a web of light because when two souls come together so do their community their family and their friends and sometimes their children mm -hmm. it is like uplifting such a big network simply by coming together so realize that it is far beyond your mental understanding here and always beloved human surrender or be okay not to know we know Many of you long to have your better half by your side. We can see it. We feel it. We feel for you. Trust that he or she is coming, that you will be walking together side by side as equals. Mm? And this simple visualization that Alex mentioned is very powerful. Visualize your divine union, but do not, pay to, do not put a face on it. Mm? Do not place any hologram that you know in your reality on that face because that will distort your reality, making you think that this soul is the one where it might not be feel, feel from within. Do not put a face on the frequency. Hmm? And everything will happen like the river. Always remember that everything is flowing in perfect harmony. The universe has your back, for goodness sake. We have your back. You have not been forgotten. Certainly not. Your soul has chosen this path for a reason. Can you now surrender into the divine knowing of your soul? Your soul knows exactly that it is coming. Transcend this eagerness 
into excitement, also contentment and presence into the inner knowing that it is happening already. As we mentioned before, hmm? it is happening already. Divine Union templates are placed in your field. This is why you feel it so strongly. This is why you are watching it. So can you surrender into that knowing? Hmm? Without trying to put a time, a date, a frame, a face. Hmm? And as we say so, activation fully completed. And please realize that we will be still working around you for some of you in the quantum also. So drink a lot of water. As usual, you know the drills working with us. Hmm? We thank you very much for watching today. We honor you. We serve you. And we love you dearly. We are here to help. Hmm? So surrender, beloved human. Everything is going perfectly. Hmm? And bye for now. And so it is. And so it is. <laughs> Thank you, Sandrine. Thank you to the Arcturian Council and all the light beings assisting. And thank you everyone on the call for receiving this. Um, to be honest, going in, we didn't really know what was gonna happen. Um, <laughs> so I'm glad that it turned out uh, pretty, pretty cosmic. And uh, please let us know in the comments how you guys feel and what your biggest takeaway has been from today. Uh, for yourself. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, yeah, it's always beautiful co-creating with, uh, with light councils and just recognizing how much love and, um, and wisdom they have to share and that it's actually um, coming, coming through us. And I know, you know, especially when we go on this journey at first, we're like, oh, we have these abilities and we have this and this and this. And you're like, okay, it's not me. <laughs> you're just like tuning your body to um, actually be, being able to handle that frequency, to be able to channel through, um, you know, the messages and the wisdom that are coming in from, um, from other light councils and other mission aligned light beings. Thank you, Alex. I'm very spaced out, as you can imagine, mm -hmm. like always. And... I just love uh, the reminder from our beautiful friends in spirit, our galactic teams, that it, like it's our, our soul knows, our soul knows. And a lot of us, we feel this eagerness and it's just because it is there and it's happening already. And also this realization that everything is flowing according to the divine plan and we only know what we need to know. And it's not for us to say, I want it right now with the like right, you know, in this very moment, this way, it's just like doing the, the work on ourselves and then surrendering it all to the universe, knowing that the universe has our back or the galactic team is there, like they're working really hard. It's not that just, just like smoking cigars, just not caring, right? They're working constantly uh, with us and for us. And for us sometimes to do the work is simply just to relax into this divine knowing that everything is happening and we're not alone. We never, we never were and we never will be alone. We are all in here, you know, together. Mm. Mm. Yes. Yeah, true. We have there's a beautiful comment that uh, that Charlize saw a lot of people in white and white petals of a big lotus flower from her heart. Um, yeah, this is beautiful. Um, and remember that, you know, you see what you see, you feel what you feel, you hear what you hear. And if you see and feel and hear nothing, that's absolutely perfect. And that's your way of receiving um, at this point in time. And it's, it's beautiful and honor that. So there's no need to, um, you know, compare. Some people get visuals, some people get sounds, some people have feelings, and so it's all divinely timed. And, you know, guys, recognize that we're we're doing our best to share with you what we feel is relevant, and this is, you know, still like less than five percent um, of the content that's that's out there. We have kind of a limited time and attention span um, that we can share at a time. And, and so, you know, for those of you who are called to go deeper and want to actually uncover that whole journey with us by your side, please reach out. Um, you know, this is the work that we are honored to do. And uh, follow us on Instagram. Um, and uh, we look forward to connecting with you soon. Yeah. Thank, so thank you. you so much, everyone, for, for receiving and uh, sending you sending you our love. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sending you all our loves. Have a beautiful rest of your day, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Um, maybe not next week, actually, Alex, because we are on Gabby's training, right? So maybe in two weeks. The next Correct. Week. We're gonna we're gonna take we're gonna take uh, one week one week quantum upgrade break. 
Yes, and if, actually I thought if any of you has a subject that you would really like us to discuss, you can always, you know, reach out and we'll see what we can do about that. Yep, I hope. I hope. Thank yeah. you, Alec. All right. Thank Thanks, you, everyone. everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.